<laughs> Here we go. All right. Podcast number tonight is? 242. 242 for July 29th. We've done this before, gentlemen and ladies. Every now and then. Okay. All right. Daniel, give us a countdown and let's have some fun tonight. All right, you guys all ready? In I am. Three, I want to do Daniel's two, job. One. The What's Neat This Week video podcast is supported by enthusiastic model railroaders just like you. <laughs> and by GL Robotics. With over 61 colors of 3D printing filaments in stock, your gateway to new technology. Check out their website at glroboticsusa.com. Further support is provided by Microengineering, keeping you on track with quality products for 55 years. Check out their website at www.microengineering.com. Order from your local dealer or order direct by calling 1-800-462-6975. Additional support is provided by Spring Creek Model Trains, your destination for model trains. Stop in and say, wow. Check out their website at springcreekmodeltrains.com. Additional support is provided by Oak Hill Model Railroad Track Supply. Check them out. Their website is ohrtracksupply.com. Additional support is provided by Yelzma Graphics, America's leading distributor of quality railroad art and embroidered clothing since 1985. Check out their website at yelzma.com. Further support is provided by the NCE Corporation, the power of DCC. Visit their website at ncedcc.com. And thank you for supporting the What's Neat This Week podcast. This is the What's Neat This Week show number 242 for July 29th. 2023. I'm your host Ken Patterson, the host of the What's Neat Show at Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine, and the August video is now complete. We got some great segments in it. In that video, I got Jennifer Kirk. She's taking us on a factory tour in Europe, which is amazing. We've also got some great drone footage. We've got a segment from Broadway Limited and from Bachman Industries with all the new products in the hobby for the month of August. Tonight we are just coming off of the RPM meet, the St. Louis RPM meet in Collinsville, Illinois. It's been two days of great models, great people, there was a lot of love in the room, and they had an overall attendance of around 800 people this year, which almost tied with their first place record of last year's show of 850 people. So good job, Lonnie, and all the folks that helped put on that wonderful show that we all come to, I don't from around the country, but everybody else does from around the country to share their models, share this, the best hobby in the world, and there was a lot of passion in that room tonight. So we've got a lot of special guests on the set. We've got a lot of special guests that we're gonna bring in on the roaming microphone over here and it's going to be a great show. I'm going to start with who's on the set tonight. Starting on the very end, I've got Ken Bird, otherwise known as my father. Hi, Ken. Indeed. Thank you, Ken. It's good to have you on the set. I also have Bob Rivard, very famous for over 30 years of published <laughs> articles in the model press, and he's Dave Davis's and my one of our favorite authors. Yes. Right? Yeah, very true. Thank Sitting you. right next to me, I've got Goalie George, otherwise known as George <laughs> Bogatok from Soundtracks. Hey, George. Hey. Hello, everybody. Good to have you. Sitting right next to me, I've got my favorite girl in the whole world, <laughs> Holly Van Lanigam. Hi, everyone. Hey, beautiful. <laughs> right next to Holly, I've got another handsome devil, Jeff <laughs> Otto from Oak Hill Model Railroad Track Supply. Hey, everybody. And I also have Lauren James hey, from Otter Valley Railroad. He's been in the hobby business for over 20 years and now in the last couple of years has started importing beautiful models that we've got some of on the table tonight that he was showing off at the show, right? Correct. So this is going to be a lot of fun tonight. I don't even know where to start on this show. <laughs> because we haven't rehearsed that part. No, we haven't done anything. <laughs> no. So let's just have some fun tonight and go around the table. Let's start with Bob Rivard. Bob, 
you came up with a way to make lumber loads. Yes. And the one thing about lumber loads that's always been missing in the hobby is that sheen that you see as the freight cars go by in the sunlight. And Bob came up with a technique of these mm -hmm. cars on the table that he wants to share with us tonight. Yep. So Luke Lemons and Luke Lemons and I have been talking about this, and uh, we've Luke's come up with some ways to print on uh, uh, on your printer to print out um, lettering to do you know, and you can. Uh, Put paper around your loads, but what was missing for me was when you put a, when you do a wrapped lumber load, it's miss. What's missing is the shiny, wrinkled plastic look that is on all lumber loads that are wrapped. So I, I decided I'm going to try using a trash bag can liner, just a garbage bag liner, the white ones that you put under your sink in your trash can, and, and I cut it apart, used some tacky spray glue, wrapped it around my balsa wood, and. Uh, I'm, I have uh, Bill Brillinger up in North Dakota. He does the decal. I, he does great lettering. So he does my lettering for me. He does them as a decal. And I can apply these as a decal now on my wrap, my uh, plastic garbage bag. And it, uh, the decal goes on as if you're putting it on painted surface. So it's, uh, and it worked. It was a little experiment and I'm very happy with it. So now I, I get the look of an actual shiny plastic and the more wrinkles that end up in this the better because think about it when you see these lumber loads on flat cars they're wrinkled shiny plastic and right. i think since the 60s and i love it i think it turned out great and i like i said i've never seen anybody address this and i'm like i said i'm kind of and then chart pad tape you put the lumber in there as you're building your stack up yep. and uh I, there's a name they call those like stringers I can't remember what the official name is, but anyway, the chart pack tape is a big deal to represent the banding. And uh, there's Bill did some can fours for me, and I I think they turned out pretty cool. And these are on the the new Rapido uh, bulkhead flat cars that came out a few months ago. Those are beautiful, and cars. everybody loves those, of course, especially if you do the '70s, right. the '70s, right? So <laughs> you gotta gotta have these on your railroad. And so I, of course, I was talking to. Dan today from Rapido about these so uh, anyway they're coming out with so many new things I can't keep up with them anyway but that's what I brought down here. That's so. awesome Bob Rivard it's so yeah. awesome it's such an honor to have you on mm -hmm. this show. At the show today we saw a lot of beautiful models I've got a pan shot of the entire room of the models that I'm showing you right now I didn't have a number of how many models were there but oh I goodness. think it was the most ever. One gentleman brought cranes and he had a prototype photo to back it up where they were loading the space shuttle off of a jet onto a dolly system to take it to the World's Fair. And it was an absolutely beautiful, beautiful diorama. Also at the show today, we had a gentleman uh, by the name of Trevor Heinz that powered up his D12 dozer and had it running and pushing sand on a table. Oh, wow. That was pretty cool. Mm. Plus he also had a very high crane that was completely operational in that the tracks moved forwards and backwards and the crane boom swung around, swung mm. around. There were so many beautiful models this year at the show. The one thing that we noticed the most is how many new company startups now have arrived in our industry with the 3D printing revolution that is taking over. It's amazing. We did some interviews with a 21-year-old, absolutely amazing individual that creates freight car uh, locomotive bodies. Um, I just, I can't tell you how our hobby is now changing with the advent of 3D printing. My, I mean, would you Mike guys Paul's agree? Grove with uh, SueParts.com does all the, for our Sioux Line modelers, does any Sioux Line horn. He's, he was there today. We got Bernard Helen down in the room tonight. Bernard, where are you? Oh, Step up here to this microphone. Hey, Bernard. Hello, hey. Catch him. Bernard scanned me. It was very painful to have to sit still for four, <laughs> four and a half minutes while I got spun around in circles. That has the itching stopped? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, but evidently, there's going to be a mini me out there. That's and there right. was a lot of people getting scanned today. I mm -hmm. saw all sorts of wonderful friends that we all know in this industry were that were getting spun yeah. around. Yeah, I did that back with in Amherst. Bernard. Bernard, tell us about your passion and what gave you the idea to do this. The very first figure I ever saw you make was Lionel Strang. 
That's right. That's right. right. The very first oh. figure I actually made was a Canadian beaver because I didn't have one. I couldn't find one anywhere. Uh, I wanted one for my layout because I, I model Quebec Gatineau from Montreal to Quebec City. And okay. I have a basement layout. And I was looking everywhere. I could find them in O scale, but nobody made a beaver, which was insane because it's, you know, the, the, it's on the Canadian Pacific Shield. They're everywhere. We even have them in downtown Toronto, the largest city in, in Canada. Beavers are everywhere, and I couldn't find an HO scale one. So I made it for myself, told a few friends, and suddenly I became a model railroad manufacturer. Okay. By mistake, I guess. It just happened. <laughs> <laughs> like I accidentally make podcasts. Yes, it, it, these things happen, Ken. These things happen. I know. Isn't it awesome? <laughs> it is. So that started off the beaver led to a moose, and the moose led to a skunk, and the skunk <laughs> led to some other critters. And then I started to play around with 3D scanning. Uh, and uh, now uh, we're scanning everybody. And it's like, you know, you can trade with your friends. You know, trade you a mini George for a mini Canon. You know, we can uh, be on each other's layouts. So you're going to be at the Anna Marie National in Texas, are you? Absolutely, I'll be scanning so there. So if any of y'all out there want to have a mini me of you made, Bernard is your source, and I believe there's a fee to do that, isn't there? Explain there is. how that works. So uh, it's eighty nine dollars, and for that uh, you get five figures uh, in the scale of your choice. And it's, it's any one scale, but if you want, you know, four HO and one O, that, that's okay, too. Uh, and, uh, and then I scan you, take it back to the studio, clean it up, make you pretty, and uh, then print them out and send them to you. That's awesome. We got we to gotta scan Holly. Yeah, absolutely. We need to put a beautiful white dress on her. That'd be a great wedding cake topper, don't you think? <laughs> absolutely. Well, uh, <laughs> this, is, this is my first time in St. Louis, is there and it won't be my last. <laughs> I love this city, and I can't wait to come back next year. I know, year. right? We got that croquet thing uh, downtown, that arch thingy. I can't wait to see <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. There was, oh my goodness, I don't even know where to start. Tonight, it was really weird. This is the first, we've been doing the RPM meet since 2012. We cover it every single year. Tonight was the very first time that we got absolutely hammered with thunderstorms. I mean, driving home from the show at 4.30 today, it's my first time in my life I ever actually pulled off the highway because it was that much. Mm -hmm. But that made an issue in that we didn't, I've got footage here of showing everybody in the backyard congregating and it was a lot of fun. I think there was a drone flying around out there tonight, too. And then we did that part where you say the August or the September or whatever video it's, this is going to appear in starts right now. So we had everybody lined up in the backyard doing that. But it's very unusual on this show that we've got everybody actually inside the house. we got multiple fans running and the air conditioner running. But let me hear a whoop, whoop, whoop from everybody that's down here because there's got to be 40 people down here tonight, right? <laughs> <laughs> there goes our sound. <laughs> but otherwise, it was an amazing, amazing show. So now I want to go over to Lauren, because your company, Otter Valley Railroad, yep. you're importing models now from China. You've got a few examples on the table. But you've, your family's been in the hobby business for over 20 years, haven't you? So this June we celebrated our 20th anniversary. Okay. I'm the second generation, and you met my little daughter Isabel today. Izzy, she yes. was one of the Bernard's uh, test scans way back in the day when he was first trying out. We did little princess Izzy's. Uh, so this is our 20th year of business. So Isabel is the third generation in our family business. We did an interview with you today, and it was so cute. Izzy was wearing the What's Neat hat. Your wonderful wife, Sarah, yeah. Sarah was there, and you were there. And I'm showing clips right now of that interview. That was fun to do. Joshua was working, and it just turned out to be a great interview. It was. Yes. Kumbaya. I love it when that happens. So tell us about your company, and tell us about the new freight cars you're coming out with. So last year we decided to jump in and start making our own freight cars as a, a brand line of our company. Our first car we delivered was the NSC 6400 trash car, and we did 12 paint schemes. It was widely successful in the Northeast and the Midwest. Um, many customers have got unit trash car trains of our product. And then we follow that up with our second car, which is the NSC 6000, which is the smaller brother of the 64. This will be out in September. So it's just finishing production now. 
And the one that a lot of guys came up to, and I know you had mentioned, Ken, about this pipe car was... Oh, I love that car. This is a Freight Car America pipe car. It's a CN-owned car. Uh, it's one of the second-hand lease. Um, but the car floats throughout all of Canada and the Midwest. And the one thing I know you caught your eye, Ken, was we also offer the XCN, which has the faded Ray CN, faded out. And uh, I'm a big guy into the prime for grime, the paid out, patch out, prototypical cars. Uh, the reason why we did this car, Ken, is I need 60 for my own layout. Because <laughs> <laughs> the industry on my layout is actually the originating factory that feeds all the pipe throughout North America. Wow. So just nice. like, you know, Jason Sherrill makes cars for his layout. <laughs> That's kind of my passion to make stuff that I like and for my layout, too. That's awesome. And if I do the edit just right, you just saw those freight cars shot out in outdoor sunlight. I know, right? We've also got Jeff Otto with us from Oak Hill Model Railroad Track Supply. Now, you know Jeff is a guy that makes your track more detailed than the prototype. I mean, <laughs> it's that, I mean, he's, he's very passionate about getting it right. And he has been pursuing this passion for well over 12 years now that I've seen you come in the shows. Yeah, that's and right. And you work very closely with Ed Dressel, who is in the audience. Hey, Ed. He's drinking. Hey. I know, right? <laughs> I've known Eddie since he was 13 years old. I know, girlfriend, <laughs> I could tell you stories. some stories. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact is, you both work together to, to chase this passion, to give us modelers the most detailed track that we can make. We've had you on the What's Neat Show at Model Road Hobbyist many times, mm -hmm. where you showed your templates, your turnout making devices, and you actually built a diorama down here for us one time. I did. But now you've even raised the bar higher on yourself with what you're doing. So talk to us about that. So Ken, so you know, I, I started you know this Oak Hill Model Road Track Supply because I, I wanted more from track. You know, I'm a huge prototype modeler. You know, I'm into steel mill modeling, and I needed a nine turnout little complex from in front of this mill, Northwestern Steel Mill in Sterling, Illinois. And you know, I made it, and I just wasn't happy with the details. So that's when I started researching prototype, mo you know, prototype drawings. Um, met Ed Dressel, and he's like, "Hey, you know, let's go in this together." And so he's been really instrumental in helping me learn all this stuff. So right now, what you see here is we've got a 90 degree diamond, a number 12 uh, rigid bolted frog. We also have a number six solid manganese steel frog. The third week of August, we're really excited to announce right now, even though everyone at the show today heard about it, because I just heard about it last night. <laughs> <laughs> we're, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna be uh, get, gaining possession of some new uh, frogs and diamonds. Number five rigid bolted frog a number eight solid manganese steel frog, a 70 degree diamond, and what I'm really excited for is a 19 degree crossing. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. We also have tie plates, which on this model here, I have the diamond, and on this part right here are tie plates. This is heavy freight tie plates. We have three other versions, medium, branch line, and yard industry. But however, I also have the drawing to make tie plates for this 90 degree diamond and also a number six turnout, as well as brand new prototypical tie rods for the, to control the points that my friend Kevin Toy from an, uh, Steel Mill Modeler Supply, whose products are amazing, you gotta check him out. Um, he helped me make the prototypical tie rods, which are literally unbelievable. Everyone that saw on the show this weekend was just blown away. On top of that, we also have a tie base, which instead of using wood ties, it's a CNC milled base that will allow you to make super prototypical track very quickly, very efficiently, and get the detail that us prototype modelers are really looking for. So I'm really excited about that. We're gonna have that in diamonds, turnouts, crossovers. But what's really exciting, and this is like kind of the icing on the cake, is we're gonna be able to do entire layouts. You got a yard, we can print, mill out an entire yard, Ken. Entire yard, layout, whatever you want. And we can also do real places. You know, you wanna model uh, the yard in East St. Louis where you walk over the bridge and look at that awesome crossing that's right there We can just pull it off of Google Maps and do it Valley Junction 
Wow. Yes, Valley We've been Junction. There. You yeah. and I have been there. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, you know, so there's lots of things coming, more parts, more frogs, more diamonds. Uh, lots of innovation coming. You know, I've got multiple people helping me with this, especially Ed Dressel, and I really appreciate you. Let me give one Thank more you. shout out to Ed Dressel. Here you are, Ed, <laughs> and your lovely lady. <laughs> Hello. Hi. It's awesome to see couples in this hobby with a passion, and I know you have that, Ed. So, way to go. Thanks. So, so if you haven't already, please go to ohrtracksupplies.com. Sign up for my email email list. I don't spam you, I just send out when we have sales and most importantly when we have new products. So awesome. I really love the RPM. It's so great to see all my old friends that I've met over the years here and I've met so many new people this weekend. Like it's just fantastic. Just love it. That's awesome. I want to thank very much Daniel Coombs for running camera for us tonight. Hey Daniel. And going? Richard is down here somewhere. Where's Richard? Show yourself. Where's Richard? Show yourself, brother. He's running camera number three tonight. Romer is over there. I don't know if you can get him. I'm not roll. getting him, so that's that. <laughs> I also have my wonderful father down here tonight, so I'm going to ask you, Ken Bird, what you uh -oh. think about the show, but I still want to catch your lovely wife. Wave to me, sweetheart. <laughs> Thank you very much for being my father's soulmate. Thank you so much for that. All right, Dad, so tell us, what did you think? think about the show today. Well, like you, I was impressed with the number of 3D models that are available now. That's going to change this hobby tremendously. And I can remember the old days when we were detailing things with lost wax castings and trying to solder them on the brass locomotives. Well, now we can buy these things already made in plastic and detail just about any locomotive you want to do. And it's so simple to do it. Plus the buildings. I was impressed with the steel mill guy. Yes. Oh, yes. And of yeah. course the grain elevators the and grain the grain elevators. products, which uh, is a big part of our industry today as far as railway. But I really want to know about... Jeff, hold on. Dad, what, yeah. was, what was that man's name that did the uh, steel mill stuff and the grain elevators? Kevin Toy, which we... Can we just get him on camera real quick and let is him say here? a word? Wow. Oh, are you here? Kevin, <laughs> come around. Oh, oh, oh yes. Yeah. yes. Step over here to the microphone for a minute because I definitely want to interview you for what's neat at some point in the future. You live in Chicago, so it's easy Howdy. so it's easy for you to come to St. Louis and be on this show and share your wares. Sure. Yeah, so tell us stuff. briefly about that. Sorry dad, this Sorry. stuff is pretty amazing. <laughs> That's all right. We're doing this on the fly. We'll yeah. <laughs> right on. What would you like to know? You're making steel mill I do. I, uh, for about uh, five years, I've uh, owned Steelman Modeler Supply, where I do uh, um, detail parts to improve uh, upon both of the available kits, but also help people build buildings that weren't currently uh, available or ever available. Uh, okay. Um, <clears throat> and then recently, uh, I watched a, a friend of mine struggling to build a, a gravity wagon, and I offered to 3D print them for him. Uh, for his ag uh, display on his layout and um, we kind of talked a little bit about that on Facebook and that thread lit up like a Christmas tree with guys asking for other stuff so uh, I literally just kind of jammed out a bunch of product for uh, and did a ton of research that's the one thing I <coughs> that I do that's a little bit different maybe from some of the other um, the guys that are that are making 3d parts um, I typically will try to find uh, an existing example of what I'm going to do or uh, use patent drawings or a lot of times I even just email the company and if they're still in business and say look I'm I want to do your product and scale uh, and oftentimes they're very gracious and they give me prints uh, that I can use to uh, actually draw the physical real part like a lot of the grain industry parts uh, that, that people saw at the show today um, are, are Clayton and Lambert uh, which is a company that's out of Kentucky, uh, Brock out of Indiana. Um, the the guys that uh, uh, I do some some uh, precast concrete loads, and uh, I emailed uh, uh, just picked out of the out of the blue a company called Knitterhouse uh, Precast Concrete in Pennsylvania, and uh, interestingly enough, I emailed them at like 11 o'clock at night, and they got uh, the guy got back to me at like 6:30 in the morning because they're an hour ahead. And uh, he, he sent me PDFs of their 
their logos from like the 1950s and and prints of the things that they make so that's amazing they're all they're all prototype based all right so tell us the name of your company again and what website do they need to go to to look at your cool stuff so for steel mill modeling it's steel mill modelers supply and that's within that steel mill modelers supply.com okay and if they want to look at the southern tier grain modeler supply stuff you go to the same website for now and there's a selection out of the out of the catalog on the right hand side uh, almost all the way down that says southern tier grain modeler supply and all the grain modeling stuff is on there most very of it. very cool and ken bird this is what you were alluding to is this revolution in 3d printing that you were talking that's about right. before i jumped on you i'm oh, sorry right. go ahead and continue dad <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know who had the big steel mill model was it walters <coughs> yes now you can really detail something like that and make it look more authentic. And what's amazing to me is what I saw in the models today that the, these people have built, the, the, the prototype modelers themselves, unbelievable details and wood box cars. I, I modeled a period 1940 to 1960 and that's, it was wonderful to see some of those fine models. But there's one thing, Ken, I want to know about how his white wedding dress. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. everybody tonight will have to chip in for the honeymoon before you leave, all right? <laughs> 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 We're just lucky to get a date once in a while, <laughs> right? Right. right? What do you think about all this, Holly? Oh, you've been it. here now. You've, we've been hanging out for almost two years. Almost. Almost two years. <laughs> you've met all my wonderful friends and cohorts. Yes. What do you think about this? It's amazing. I know, right? Yes. Last year we went to Vic's house. Yes, we did. And that was amazing to see the city edge layout. Yeah. I need to get out there one of these times. Oh, I'm amazing. so busy. Every time I get here, I don't have a chance, but it's <laughs> high on my radar. Oh, yeah. It's it's awesome. I'll go with you, George. Okay. Yeah. Let's, Let's do it next year. We'll Great. Yep. At least you know I hang out with good people. Yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> all right, George Bogatuck from Soundtracks. Before I go to you, because I want to know all about this. Oh, oh, it's coming, guys. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want to take this moment to thank very much Denny Yelzma at Yelzma.com and Yelzma Graphics for supplying us with all these beautiful hats, these What's Neat This Week hats that we handed out at the show. Everywhere you looked and up the aisle, a lot of people were wearing our beautiful hats that Denny donated. Just the brand, what we do to promote the best hobby in the world. Thank you so much, Denny. I want to bring in Bill and Stephanie Ward to the microphone. Now, Bill and Stephanie Ward, I saw them at the show yesterday. Um, they were very, very intently studying a lot of different things on the tables. And Bill is an officer of the law, correct? That's correct. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're from, we're from Youngstown, Ohio. Uh, this is our first RPM meet. I've wanted to go to an RPM meet for the last 10 years. Uh, we enjoy prototype modeling. And it's really been great to get to put some faces to all the names I see in print every month. Great event. Plan on coming back next year. And you guys did a segue for me on the What's Neat show where you say, uh, what did you say? The, the Hi, What's Neat? Uh, you're watching you're What's watching Neat with Ken, Ken Patterson. Patterson. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> <laughs> two, two years ago, I had Myra and Scott Lindsay do the same thing for me. Myra and Scott. Myra fell in love with our dog tonight. Our puppy. <laughs> I saw your puppy. You guys are also a wonderful couple. Just like Bill and Stephanie, you both have a passion for this hobby. And I've seen you guys at shows. You interact with the crowd very well. Tell us about your passion. Well, we, we came to the RPM to represent the Southern Railway Historical Association. We're a member of that, and along with the l and and several other, several other of the historical groups that participate here and are a key part of the event. So... We, we love interacting with the people, as you noted. We love researching railroad history, photography, and modeling is just one of the many facets that we enjoy of the hobby. That's awesome. Myra, is there anything you could add to that? Well, I'd like to say that we actually met on a train. Oh, whoa! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've loved trains since I was a little girl. So, um, we met seven years ago yeah. and just got married three years ago so mm -hmm. congratulations um, but we do have a, both had the passion for the trains and uh, we like to rail fan and do photos and 
and just yeah, and just, <laughs> just be around a lot of people that share the same passion. I know you said rail fanning, and she got all excited. Oh, good. I took her out uh, to the what was it? The across the river here, the what's it called? The uh, Chester Sub, Chester <laughs> Sub <laughs> Double Track Main Line. We've got uh, Jeff Meyer down here tonight, who actually runs that train over there. That's his layout. For the UP Railroad mm -hmm. and Holly and I obviously went there one time and it was really exciting to see those mainline freights just blowing through at about yeah. 65 miles an hour. I mean it was cool she was waving at the engineer <laughs> yeah, <I was. laughs> and she absolutely understands the tones of the horns for the railroad crossing which many of us really don't pay attention to but it was really cool that you picked right up on that. <laughs> It was fun. It was fun. <laughs> all right, George Bogatuck, the floor is all yours because you've got some exciting news for all the folks that own Androids. I do. Actually, we will be having, uh, this weekend I was showing off the beta version of the Android app. And this is for our Blue Nami that everybody's turning heads or getting really excited about because this allows us to talk directly through Bluetooth direct to the decoder. So we don't have to learn CVs anymore. We have an intuitive app and we can do everything from running our locomotives. There's a function button here where I can see what the names of all the functions are. So I don't need to worry about trying to remember which button does what sound effect, things like that. And then there's a gear down here on the bottom that I can make all my adjustments, including function mapping, volume control, sound selections. Everything's right here done through the app. The cool thing with the Blue Nami is for you Android guys, you don't need to wait for a Blue Nami Android version. The decoder's the same. Okay. The difference is how the signal is generated through the different a Apple iPhones, iPads, and now the Android. The signal coming out of this Bluetooth direct to the decoder is going to be exactly the same. So if you guys are waiting on Blue Nami for the Android app, you can get your Blue Namis now, and this will be available hopefully in the next few weeks. Um, this is beta version, and so right now all I can do is run one locomotive at a time. Um, I don't have the consisting built into it, and I don't have multi-train operations, but that's what they're working on right now, trying to get it done, and we're hoping to have it ready for the national show. But I wanted to show this off because Blue Nami is certainly turning heads. The more I talk to people, everybody's excited about it. They're saying this is the way to go because, again, you don't have to remember CVs. You don't have to care about CV numbers. And just real quickly, I can show you. We go to gear settings here, go up to sound settings. And if I want to change the volume of the master volume right here at the top, it says master volume. I can simply click that, and I can use a slider bar to adjust the volume levels and click OK. Um, if I want to change a different whistle, I've got this steam engine over here on the layout. I just click on the whistle and it pulls up a list of all the different whistles so you don't have to remember the CV number. You don't have to remember which value corresponds to which whistle. You just scroll through the list, find the one you want and click on it. And on the Android app right now, it'll actually sample it. And I have it muted right now in the background because of all the mics and so much noise. But it'll actually play a sample, and this button right here will allow you to actually sample it again so you can adjust volume control and make your adjustments on the fly right from the app. <laughs> and this wow. is super exciting. We're really happy about this. And with the uh, Android, like I said, there's a lot of people that have been saying, hey, we Android guys, we're not forgetting you. Mm -hmm. We're building the app. It just takes a little bit of time. And then we're also working on different board formats, so be sure to uh, check out, if you're not subscribed to our newsletter, uh, soundtracks.com, subscribe to the newsletter for updates and new announcements, things like that. And just like Jeff over here, I'm not going to blast you with uh, spam or anything. We're not going to sell anything. We're only going to send you information uh, with uh, updates on new products, sales, things like that. So uh, that way you'll know when new formats are available. That's but we're amazing. really excited about that. The technology is certainly turning heads. And uh, you can run multiple trains with this app. You can run them con system in a matter of seconds. No more having to calculate CV values or any of this stuff and mm. punch it all in on the fly. It just click, click, click. Now I'm running multiple locomotives. Even you can figure this out. <laughs> well, last time, last time I had to give Mike Buddy a hard time. So this time you're, you're in the hot seat. <laughs> Gosh, no now, more three. When I was a, <laughs> when I was young, like before I even got into kindergarten, um, before I even knew anything about the world, my father drove a truck, and it had a dog speaking into a speaker, and I think the company was called Selvania, if I remember correctly. RCA. 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 Okay, Victor. is that what that was? Okay, the dog. Victor. Okay, 
And it's because I'm old. I was sitting on the back porch talking into an oscilloscope, watching my voice pattern, which I now I see every day when I edit video. So that's a full circle. Mm -hmm. But Dad, you've seen this hobby oh, go good. from the Stone Age, the Caveman <laughs> Age, <laughs> to this kind of stuff that George is talking exactly. about. Yeah. Did, did you see this coming back then? Well, not there were there were. Remember the old days of the GE remote control system that came out? Yeah, that was the inkling that something was called was going to happen. It was called Ast 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 in my model Correct. Railroad I book. Remember, I remember that. And I, uh, I, I toyed around. Those well. decoders were the size of two ice yep, cubes. That's right. You, you put right. it in a box yeah. car. I think that's yes. the only way you can make yeah. it that's work. That's right. Yep. Yeah, and they were they were they worked. They were fine, but they mm -hmm. were compared to today, it's night and day. You know, it's just unbelievable what's yep. going on out there. And who who knows what we're going to have here in another. 20 years or so. You know, it's going to be amazing. Now, I'm still running 1950s Varney cars and Catherine <laughs> 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 metal cars. I'm th but I do have a, a nice DCC system called NCE. Ooh. Uh, oh, yeah. there you go. Right. right. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about forming a group for all of us guys who are over 75. It's the OFRT, Old Farts Running Trains. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We don't have any dues. You just send us your social security check. Each <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, Lord. <laughs> All right, guys, going around the table, we're coming up on 30 minutes on this show, and it was a really good one. Is there anything else that we need to cover? Steve Day, anything you want to say? Hi, hi, Steve. Say hi to everybody. It's yeah. great to be here. The RPM meet was great again. And um, one of the models that really caught my eye was that uh, display that a gentleman had of the three car dealerships. Mm -hmm. There must have been oh. 200 cars. Joseph Levins. That was what beautiful. What was his name? <laughs> Joseph Levins. <laughs> Joseph Levins. Joseph yeah. Levins. And there was a Mercedes dealership? It was a Mercedes dealership, a uh, Ford. Ford dealership. And uh, I mean, you look the in the showroom. Yeah, the Carvana. Carvana. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I'm, show, I'm showing video of that right now as you're talking about it. it I was got amazing. it on my phone too. It was great. It was beautiful, and that was all 3D printed. Yes. And all that was printed with a filament printer. Wow. Hmm. wow. Yes. That's, that's saying a lot. Yes. Yes. And the big thing is, you and me both have a garbage truck. Like this one right oh, I, oh my God. Holly, Holly, I did buy one thing at the show today. Yeah. I, bought you bought the, hey. I bought a trash truck. Beautiful. Yesterday you bought that. Yes, I bought it yesterday. <laughs> I got one too, Ken. So my layout will now be, guys. we will now have yeah. trash service on this layout for the first time <laughs> in 30 years. Right? Yes, sir. I know, right? All right, Steve Day. We need a test line. A Tesla. Landon wants a Tesla. Okay, my son's gonna build one for him after he graduates from college. Okay. <laughs> so this is all gonna work out. Yeah. All right, guys. So with that, this is the best hobby in the world with all the best people in it sitting around us down here right now. I'm gonna shoot video of everybody that's down there. Say hey to us. Whoop 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 it up one more time. <laughs> Thank you very much for everybody that participated at the show today and that helped us shoot this show this evening. Now what we're going to do, like I always love to say, the NCE Pro Cab and the smaller cab. we got two radios in the ceiling. And by the way, this layout does run. Thank you very much, Dirk Reynolds, for coming over here Thursday and help me clean this place. Right? <laughs> I'm going to give Holly the hammerhead here and we are going to go run some trains. That's it. Okay, for the thumbnail shot, I think I'm going to use the photo from outside when we said the What's Neat show starts right now. I think I'm going to let that run for the thumbnail so we don't have to do that. Thank you very much, Richard and Daniel, for running camera for us tonight. Keep camera number one rolling for 45 seconds. Kill two, kill three. I will kill sound. Thank you very much, everybody, for making this show work tonight. Thank you. That's right. <laughs> oh my God, that's my thumbnail. Whoa. You want some extra to take your buddies? Sure. How many you want? Well, yeah, remember, I am. It was a privilege to be on here. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ken's dad. <laughs>
Yeah. 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 Yeah, right.